Hi everyone, welcome to the video. Today I'm sharing some essential emergency nursing tips specifically for new grads entering the ER. As a fellow ER nurse, I know how overwhelming those first days can feel. This video is designed for those who haven't yet started on the floor. I'm going to walk you through the key things to focus on ahead of time, what to research, what to familiarize yourself with, and how to get a little bit of a head start. By the end of this video, you're going to have a clear idea of how to prepare and feel more confident stepping into the fast paced world of emergency nursing. So what is ER nursing? To put it simply, it's fun, it's chaotic, and yes, it's going to be draining at times. But even with the challenges, it's absolutely worth it. The fast-paced environment, the unpredictability, and the opportunity to make a real difference in patients' lives makes it very rewarding and worthwhile. So once you hit the floor, one of the first things I want you to do is to go on a scavenger hunt. I want you to know where the essential supplies are going to be because caring for sick patients, knowing where supplies are or is extremely critical. You never know what type of patient is going to walk in through your doors or be brought in by emergency services. So you need to be able to grab exactly what you need quickly in order to take care of your patients when it matters most. So on that note, being proactive and not being reactive is one of the most important traits to have as an ER nurse. If you're assigned to a specific room or area or specific rooms, make it a habit to check them at the start of your shift. Ensure that you have ambu bags available. Those are the bag valve masks. Ensure that you have suction set up and that it's properly working. Ensure that you have the supplies needed to connect a patient to the monitor. Check your glucometers in the morning and make sure they're calibrated and they're ready to go when they're needed. By having everything prepped and ready beforehand, you're going to be ready to stabilize a patient when they come in. So again, make sure that you're proactive, that you're not reactive, that you're checking your rooms early on in the day for a BVM for suction and for monitor supplies because those are going to be the essential things needed for every emergency. So when you're first starting, take some time to write down the critical phone numbers that you're going to need regularly. Keep a small notebook handy for this. Know the numbers for respiratory therapy, for x-ray, for ultrasound, for CT, MRI, your chart shooters, and the providers. So you're not going to memorize them all right away, and that's completely okay. You just need to have a notebook where you have them written down and that they're easily accessible for you, right? This is going to be the number one step of you learning to be self-sufficient. Get the numbers down, have them written down so when you need them, you have them readily available for you. So for supplies and equipment, you need to familiarize yourself with where everything is stored, including where the restraints are at, where the IV pumps are, the tubing, and the supplies for starting IVs. You need to know where your ER has the PIXIS machine, where the medications are located, and which meds are located in each different PIXIS. Sometimes one PIXIS or medication dispensing machine will have specific medications while a different one will have more of the critical care ones. So just know which ones are which. Know where the IO guns is because you're going to need it in an emergency situation. Know where your glucometer is and know how to use them and know how to calibrate them. Know where your EKG machines are located. Know how to take an EKG. Know where the Foley catheters are, the warming and the cooling devices. And then most importantly, know where the crash carts are located. Know if your ER has a pediatric crash cart and then an adult crash cart and know where they're located. The crash cart is the crown jewel as an ER nurse, right? So take a day with your preceptor or after a used crash cart is uh, open and go through every drawer, drawer. Learn what's inside of each drawer, which meds are there and where the meds are and how to use a defibrillator that's on top. Be especially familiar with the pediatric crash cart if your hospital or ER uses them and how it differs from the adult cart, cart right? You should know the crash cart like it's the back of your hand. And then other key items to know where they are include chest tubes, central line kits, arterial line kits, airway supplies. Even though the RT usually handles the airways, you may need to act quickly if they're unavailable. So central lines and arterial lines are essential for the really sick patient. So knowing where those supplies are is extremely important, especially if your provider has multiple patients that are sick, by you, you simply knowing the supplies are, having them at bedside, them being ready, your provider can come in, pop the central line in, pop the arterial line in, and you can give those super important medications to the central lines like vasopressors, right? So being adaptable and knowing where these items are are going to help you to step in and be more comfortable in your environment of the ER. So a quick recap, know where to find the phone numbers, write them down, know where the PIXIS machines are, the glucometers, the EKG machines. Most importantly, know where the crash carts are and then have an idea of where the chest tube, central lines, and arterial line kit and airway supplies are located. The more you familiarize yourself with these essentials, the better prepared you're going to be when emergencies do come up. Now, 
when it comes to building competency as an ER nurse, it's important to understand that it's a process. It takes time. In the beginning, during those first one to four months, it's going to feel very overwhelming. There's there's going to be a ton of information just thrown at you, and your main focus will be just kind of getting comfortable and keeping your head above water in the environment of the ER. At this stage, you're not going to be competent. You're going to be slow, and this slowness is okay. You're just you're just building your confidence little by little. It's not around the three to ninth month mark that you start feeling a little more confident, just a bit more and more familiar with diseases process that you encounter. You're going to start recognizing patterns and start connecting the dots, but there's still going to be moments when you feel unsure and that's okay. Again, it's all part of the learning curve. It's not until about one year in that you start feeling a little more confident. You start feeling you can handle what comes through those doors. By this point, you're going to be more confident, less ancient, and you're going to be able to just do most things without second guessing yourself as much. Again, it takes time, but so does anything worth mastering. And as an ER nurse, it's going to be very challenging, but again, it's very worth it. So the ER is tough, but it's incredibly uh, worth it long term, right? Because you're learning so much, you're becoming the jack of all traits. So be patient with yourself and know that the growth is happening, even if it doesn't feel like it. Once you hit the more experienced nurse stage around three years or more, you've seen a lot, you've been through countless scenarios, you've developed those gut instincts that tell you just when something isn't right. Most importantly, you're going to realize that you don't know everything and that's a good thing. So because knowing what you don't know is critical. It's what makes you a safe and effective nurse, which is why when you're new, you don't want to be cocky and think that you know everything because that's, that's how you're going to make a mistake and you're going to end up killing somebody. But when you do get to that experience stage as an, as an ER nurse, you're going to feel more comfortable just looking things up. You're going to feel more comfortable just asking your fellow nurses and asking for their input. You're not going to hesitate to ask your coworkers about uh, for help because you know that as an experienced nurse, you're not going to know everything. You're going to be okay with asking uh, questions like, have you done this before? Can you show me how to do this? Or what do you think about this situation? You're going to recognize that the providers are also a valuable resource and that you can ask them questions and learn from them. Again, the worst thing you can do in the ER is assume that you know everything and let that lead to mistakes that could harm a patient and eventually could lead to your license being revoked, right? The, the reality is that no one knows everything, especially in the ER, where everything's always changing. There's always new information being updated. So embrace a mindset of continuous learning and that you're going to grow little by little, especially in that one to three months when it's just kind of everything being thrown at you. By the way, if you're finding this information helpful and you want to deeper dive into what it takes to thrive as an ER nurse, you can check out uh, our book and our course. Um, it's packed with just practical tips, a good checklist, and everything you need to feel confident and prepared in those first three months when you're first starting out. And if you just want everything in one location, go ahead, again, check out our book or our course. The links are going to be in a pinned comment. Now let's get into diseases that you need to familiarize yourself with before you start. So let's talk about familiarizing yourself with these before hitting the floor. So this is by no means an, exhaust, like an exhaustive list, but these are some of the most common conditions you're going to encounter repeatedly. Focus on understanding the basics of each disease, their acute presentation, and how you are supposed to stabilize them and treat them in the ER. Knowing the long-term care is valuable, but your priority as a new ER nurse should be about acute care and acute stabilization of these patients. So here are some of the key conditions I want you to focus on. For cardiac conditions, just to go over a few uh, key ones, know your CHF exacerbations, know your ACS, which includes your heart attacks, but that's just a STEMI or NSTEMI or acute angina. Know your ACLS scenarios, familiarize yourself with the algorithms and medications for cardiac arrest, for SVT, for bradycardia, and then know how to recognize key ECG rhythms. For respiratory conditions, know pulmonary embolisms, asthma exacerbations, COPD exacerbations, and other treatments and the medications used. Know the basics of pneumonia pneumonia and overall how to recognize respiratory failure, again, including the acute treatment or neurological conditions, no strokes, including ischemics versus hemorrhagic strokes and going into hemorrhagics could know about brain bleeds, including the different types and how to recognize the symptoms know about seizures, aneurysm, encephalitis, and meningitis. For endocrine and metabolic conditions, know DKA. Know that, just look up DKA beforehand, it's very important. Know hypoglycemia and how to treat it. Review a little bit of thyroid storm. And then for substance abuse and toxicology, review alcohol withdrawal and delirium tremens. Review um, alcohol intoxication, meth intoxication. Review even a little bit of what PCP is. And then very importantly, review opioid overdoses with like fentanyl or heroin. How do you recognize, say, what kind of symptoms do you expect to see? And then what are the reversal agents? 
Also keep in mind GI bleeds, upper versus lower, review cirrhosis, related varices, pancreatitis, obstructions, and then the common GI infections. And other important conditions to be mindful of include shock, dialysis complications, UTI specifically in uh, young children or with uh, elderly as well, no rhabdo, uh, be mindful of acute kidney, kidney injury and cancer related complications. And then just to finish it off with some of the essentials like burns and the basics of trauma care, including the ABCs or airway breathing circulation. And finally, just make sure that you review super quick uh, the psych medications for aggressive, combative, uh, violent patients. I know that it seems like a lot. Well, frankly, it is, right? But that is why you need to keep in mind that it's a slow, steady progress. It's not going to be till a full year before you start feeling a little confident. Make sure that you review regularly and that you build on your knowledge. So the focus areas for each condition include reviewing the acute signs and symptoms, stabilization techniques and treatment, and the common medications that you're going to see the provider's order. The goal is to have a superficial foundational understanding of these conditions so that you don't feel completely unprepared when you do hit the floor as an ER. The learning will come little by little. The foundation will come as you review, as you see things, and everything kind of starts uh, building itself on. But before you start, it's always really helpful if you just review these things, at least just the very essential basics of each. Now, let's talk about the medications and procedures that you should review before you hit the floor. Um, it's going to be difficult, again, to fully grasp things like titration, uh, vasopressors without the hands-on experience, but at the very least, you can look up the basics of what each medication does. That way, when you do start working with these medications, you're going to at least be a little bit familiar with them. So some of the critical medications to include include um, vasopressors, such as norepinephrine, epinephrine, phenylephrine, dopamine, dobutamine, and then vasopressin. Learn what each vasopressor is for, what receptors they act on, and the types of conditions they're best suited for. Review blood pressure lowering medications, including nicardipine, nitroglycerin, labetalol, hydrolazine, and vasotec. Review heart rate medications, including deltiazem, metoprolol, esmolol, and miodorone. And then review sedative medications such as sedation for intubated patients like propofol, midazolam, fentanyl, and even Presidex. And then review sedation for psychiatric conditions, including Haldol, lorazepam, olanzapine, and even ketamine. And then lastly, just touch on reviewing the medications that we use for rapid sequence intubation, including etomidate, succinylcholine, and rocuronium. Again, I know it's overwhelming, but you start with the basics. Even just knowing that they exist exist and knowing what they're used for is extremely, extremely essential just before you start as an ER nurse. Key procedures to know um, are going to include rapid sequence intubation, central line placement, arterial line placement, thoracentesis, paracentesis, lumbar puncture, uh, chest tubes, Minnesota tube placement, external ventricular drain placement, and even a simple incision and drainage. Um, you need to know at least the, what the steps are recognize when something goes wrong and understand how to monitor for these complications and what to do about it if a complication does come up. For example, for rapid sequence intubation, know what the medications are, are, know the steps of RSI, know what should be done if complications arise like a, like failed attempts, if the SpO2 starts to drop or if blood pressure starts to drop during the intubation, right? For a central line placement, familiarize yourself with the supplies needed and what to do for complications. For example, what should be done if the provider accidentally causes a pneumothorax while placing a central line? Review how to zero an arterial line, how to monitor a chest tube drainage device, what you monitor for and what it's used for as far as like a Minnesota or Blakemore tube. Everything makes more sense when you experience it on the floor, but I firmly believe that at least reviewing it even if briefly beforehand helps the anxiety of everything being on it, thrown at you go a little bit down. So now let's talk about some of the ER skills that you should review a little bit ahead of time. Review how to defibrillate, including what knobs to turn, what buttons to press, and when it's in indicated to defibrillate and when it isn't in ACLS, right? You can do that way beforehand watching a couple of videos. Learn how to pace, learn how to cardiovert, learn the basics of an ECG, including how to take an ECG, how to connect patients to the monitor, uh, which leads, which colors go where, review how to place an IO and the basics, the very basics of what it means to manage a mechanically ventilated patients, right? Just being aware of where the ET tube goes, what gets connected to the ET tubes and other tubes that go to the ventilator. And again, when you get on the floor, even beforehand, because your hospital should be training you before you get on the, on the floor, review your crash cart, go through each drawer, learn what's inside, understand how to use a defibrillator, pacing in the cardio version, and then know where the medications are at. Again, the crash cart is the lifeline in emergencies, so take the time to become familiar with it. And again, I just want to emphasize, it's a process. 
Be patient, but be strategic, right? Review regularly and build on what you know. Super quick, let's review some key supplies you must have to succeed as an ER nurse. These aren't clinical for the most part, but if you don't have these, you're going to set yourself up for failure, right? So make sure that you have good, comfortable shoes because you're going to be on your feet for hours at a time. So don't cheap out on shoes. Besides good shoes, make sure that you wear compression socks because compression socks are essential for reducing leg and foot fatigue. Have good trauma shears because you're going to be cutting through clothing and a lot of other things regularly. Again, have a small notebook to take notes on. And finally, just have a good military time watch um, that you can use um, throughout the, your shifts, right? And briefly, I do want to talk about some certs and courses that at some point you should consider in your nursing career, right? The key ones are going to be, of course, your BLS, ACLS, PALS, and NIH. Most hospitals won't even let you be on the floor unless you have these. For other courses and certs, consider the CEN or Certified Emergency Nurse Certificate. Having it shows that you've gone above and beyond in your ER nursing knowledge. Uh, also consider the ENPC or the TNCC. These two are essential if your hospital does not commonly see pediatric or severe trauma emergencies as they help you at least grasp the essential key basics. I know it seems far away the day when you feel confident enough when you start talking, uh, start taking additional courses, but it will come. So just keep them in mind because eventually you will want to broaden and just deepen your knowledge and be a better ER nurse. And then talking just resources, again, our, check out our book or our course. It's mainly just for brand new ER nurses as it covers all the essentials without overwhelming you. Um, the book is great by itself. It, it, the course, on the other hand, comes with the, a PDF download of the book, plus our charting essentials book and our, care bra our brain care sheets book, plus countless video lectures. If it's Again, if it sounds like something you're interested, check them out. The link is in the comment section. And then Let's finish it with one of the most important things for ER nurses, teamwork. In the ER, teamwork truly makes the dream work. It's critical to help your fellow ER nurses and coworkers when they're drowning, especially if you're not busy, right? There will be moments when everything hits the fan and it feels like chaos everywhere. Everyone will be stabilizing their own patients and barely keeping their heads above water. But if you're not drowning, if you're just charting or have a lighter load, get up and help your coworkers who are struggling. Why? Because some days the roles will be reversed. You're going to have super sick patients and you're going to need help. If you foster a culture of teamwork your co-workers will step up for you just like you did for them teamwork just isn't about being nice it's about creating an environment where everyone feels supported even in the hardest days it makes the chaos seem just a little bit more manageable so again remember teamwork makes the dream work